All right. So we've talked about two different types of integrals. We've talked about it where we integrate up to b. So think of that as like integrating from a to b. That gives us like a definite area. That gives us an actual number. And then we also talked about uh, integrating from a to x. Now when you solve a problem involving integrating up to x, what does your answer look like? Your answer looks like a function because it's, it's an expression with an x in it. So integrating from a to b in terms of area, well, that makes sense. That's just the, that's just the area under the function from a to b. It's some number. OK. But in terms of area, what does it mean to say we're going to integrate from a to x? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, it means if you tell me where we stop, then I can tell you how much area is under that section. But from you, you mean from the origin? Well, starting, starting at A. Starting at whatever, whatever A is that I give you. OK. So yeah, I have to. <laughs> no, it's just a, it's a typing problem. Yeah. Okay. So this is a function that says, if you tell me where we stop, then I can tell you how much area is under the curve. So from that description, hopefully it makes sense to say we're going to call this the area function. And here's the notation that we're going to use. So what does A stand for? Area. Area. So what does that little f stand for? That little f stands for the function that you are given. So area uh, for your function f is defined in the following way. It's the integral from A up to x of your function. So this is um, another way of thinking about antiderivatives. So previously we said if we know f prime, what's f? Now we're saying suppose we have some function f, what's the antiderivative? Well, now we know that just give, if we just think of some starting with some function f, the antiderivative is an integral. We know we can represent that in terms of area. The integral of a function is the area under the function. So let's think about this. So suppose my function is 2x. Graph big F of x. Now, of course, as we know, big F of x means the antiderivative. So how are we going to do that? Well, one way to do this is to think of it in terms of area. So, um, oh, let's say, okay. So notice that I'm going to talk about area under f starting at 0. So in this case, I'm using a equals 0, so starting at 0. So suppose my x value was 0. How much area is under the graph from 0 to 0? Zero? 0 to 0. Nothing, right, because I haven't taken anything out. Okay, great. What about at 1? OK. Well, so I want to be a little bit clever. So this graph, y equals 2x, looks like that. OK. So obviously, so I'm going to start here. So we're starting at 0. So if I go up to 1, what's the area? Well, what shape is that? Triangle. It's a triangle, so we can find the area. So the base is 1. And what's the height? What's the height? The height is 2. OK? So half times 1 times 2, well, that gives you 1. So when x is 1, the area is 1. OK. 
What about when x is 2? Right, how do we get that? The base is 2, the height is 4. So 2 times 4, so half times 2 times 4 gives you 4. Next, what about when x equals 3? What's the base? 3, the height is? The function is 2x. So the height is, so the height is going to be 6. So half times 3 times 6 gives you 9. So here we're generating values for the area function. And if we wanted to make this nice, we can just graph the entire area function. Now, just from being clever and knowing what we know, you should be able to guess what the area function is. The area function is x squared. Now, why is that not a surprise? Exactly. The function is 2x. And we know that the area function is the antiderivative. So it should be x squared plus c. And it turns out from looking at our numbers, we can see that the plus z is just going to be 0. So the antiderivative, which in this case we're thinking of as the area function, is x squared. OK. So let's tie this all together. If you have the area function, and you take the derivative, what are you going to get? You're going to get the function you started with. Because the area function is the antiderivative of, of, the, of this function. So if you take the area function, <coughs> then take the derivative, you just get your original function. And that is why that I say that's why I say the area function is a way to visualize the antiderivative. Okay. Um.